The Sony ZV-1 Mark II is an amazing camera if you set it up the right way. But the right settings are different for everyone because it depends on your style of shooting and what you're shooting. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up this camera for four different levels of users. Level one is for beginners all the way to getting the best from this camera. Also, if you wanna learn how to get the best out of your camera, even if it's just a beginner camera, make sure to check out the links in the description down below. So first, let me show you the body of the camera. So you have the on and off button, another button to switch between photo, video, and slow motion, a video record button, and a shutter button for taking photos, and the button on the right is the defocus button, giving you blurry depth of field effect with just one click. If you slide your finger from the left on the back screen, you get a quick menu for accessing major settings like cinematic vlog mode, audio, and other things, and you also get a Another quick menu if you hit the function button, which is the FN button, for another quick menu with other major settings on it. Next up, I want to show you how to change your shutter, ISO, and aperture. To change shutter and aperture, it's a little bit of a process. If you hit the scroll wheel down, because it's also a button, you can switch between your shutter and aperture setting. So if you click down once, you'll get aperture. If you click again, you'll get shutter. And from here, you rotate the scroll wheel left to right to change your shutter setting. And then if you hit it again, you can change your aperture setting. To change ISO, you hit right on the scroll wheel, and then here your ISO setting will come up and you can change your ISO. So most of you guys are probably using this camera for video and vlogging, and I wanna show you how to set up this camera for the best video possible at different levels, starting with level one, which is for beginners. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you're in video mode by hitting the top button right here. And then you wanna hit menu. And with that, you'll have a bunch of menu options on the left. You wanna make sure you either use your scroll wheel or the touch screen where you, because it's also a touch screen. And you wanna to go to image quality and record. You wanna hit right again here. And at the top, you'll see file format and you wanna pick 4K video, unless you need slow motion, 4K was going to give you the best quality. Then you wanna to go to movie settings right below it. Go to record frame rate, 24 is for cinematic video, 30 frames per second will give you smoother motion, and most vloggers actually tend to shoot in 30 frames per second, so that's another thing to consider, but you wanna pick your frame rate here, and then you wanna click down again here, and then you wanna either go to 100, 100 megabits per second or 60 megabits per second, and you'll get 420 color in 8-bit in both options, so for this video, let's go with 100 megabits per second, because this is going to give you the best bit rate, thus the best quality, but for a lot of you guys, you're probably not gonna notice a huge difference in vlogging, so you can go with 60 megabits per second, but if you're going to be tweaking your colors, and you wanna make sure you have room to play around with your colors later on, you wanna pick 100 megabits per second. And these three settings are going to give you the best 4K possible, but one thing that every beginner forgets is autofocus because none of this works unless your video is perfectly sharp. So let me show you how to set up your autofocus for what you need. So for this, you wanna hit the function button and here you'll see a bunch of different settings come up. You wanna go all the way to the right to focus area. And for this, you wanna either pick wide, zone, or spot flexible. So wide is what I recommend for most people because this will look at your entire image area and figure out what needs to be in focus. But if you know something is going to either be in the center, in the top right, top left, in that case, you wanna to go to zone, click into it, and this will let you pick different zones in the image area. But this is only recommended if you know something is specifically going to be in a specific part of your image area. And next up, you wanna to enable touch autofocus. For this, from autofocus area, you wanna to go to the left, which is touch function. You wanna click into it using the center button. And you can either use touch focus, touch tracking. Um, you also have the option for touch AE, but the one that I recommend for most people is simply using touch tracking. This way, you can tap an object on the back screen and it will automatically track focus to that. This can be your face and subject you're recording like a car, whatever you want, but touch autofocus is the best way to use this camera. You also wanna make sure you have the right focus mode enabled. For this, you wanna go back into your function menu, go one block up from uh, autofocus and then you'll see focus mode click into that and you'll have two options autofocus continuous or manual focus you simply want to make sure you have it in continuous autofocus even for photos and this way the autofocus is always tracking always working and just like that we've set up this camera for level one beginners to get the best possible 4k video from this camera but you can take it even further with level two. So for level two, chances are you really want your video to stand out from everything else out there. 
and you also want to dial in your own creative taste. So for that, we're going to access two very specific settings depending on your specific needs. So we're gonna open up cinematic vlog mode by swiping left on the main screen. And then right here at the very bottom, you'll see cinematic vlog mode. For this, you'll have options of a few different looks, which is classic, clean, chic, fresh, mono. Honestly, you can just pick whatever colors you like the best. My personal favorite is fresh. And then once you have that, right next to it, you'll see something that says auto, but this is actually for a color filter of either gold, ocean, forest. Now, I personally really like gold, but it may interfere with the kind of lighting you have. So this is something you need to experiment with. Usually gold is good for evening, ocean is good for during the daytime, and forest I don't think has ever looked good, but you can try it out. And then right next to that, you'll see another little button that says AF. So once you hit that, you'll actually be able to access your autofocus speed. So this, you always wanna keep it high, and this way you can easily dial in a cool creative look but one thing to note is that it actually gives you black bars at the top and bottom of your screen, and a lot of people aren't going to like that, especially vloggers, because that's not how you represent uh, present content on YouTube. So for you guys, I would turn off cinematic vlog mode, and right below that is creative filters, and here you'll get a wide variety of creative looks from standard, portrait, neutral, vivid, vivid 2. For the most part, these creative looks don't actually look very good but there's something we can do to make them better. So once you're in your creative looks, if you hit right on the scroll wheel, you'll actually have a bunch of settings pop up like sharpness, saturation, fade, shadows, highlights, and you can take whatever creative look you like or kind of like, and you can actually dial in your own creative look inside of that creative look. I personally really like to just bump up my saturation and add a little bit of fade to it to make it look more cinematic. This is something I recommend experimenting with because I really like a very vintage look to my stuff, but you might like something very modern and poppy. So this is something to uh, experiment with, but it's much better than cinematic vlog mode in terms of creativity and flexibility. But both of these modes are going to help you dial in your unique taste and your unique creative look, which is without a doubt going to help you stand out from the other thousands, if not millions of videos on YouTube. But maybe you just care about dialing in your creative vision, expressing yourself through your videos. And in that case, we should move on to level three of how to get the perfect video from the Sony ZV-1 Mark II. And in this case, we're gonna check out cinematic profiles. For this, we're going to hit the function button and all the way on the left in the top corner, you're going to see PP. Now PP stands for picture profile. So in this case, you'll see about 11 picture profiles, but it doesn't really matter which one you pick. You wanna hit right and you'll see a bunch of settings come up, but you wanna pick gamma, click into gamma. And then here you'll see cinema one, cinema two. You wanna keep going down to S log two or S log three. Now these are log profiles. What it basically does is it gives you a super flat, very desaturated image in your camera and this way you can you have way more room to play around with the image but to make this profile complete you have to go down to color mode go to movie and go down to s gamut or s gamut 3 cine this will depend on which log profile you picked if it's s log 2 just go with s gamut if it's s log 3 go with s gamut 3 cine or S gamut 3, the two gamuts are very close um, and it really depends on what LUT you're using, which is a more complicated topic. But for this time, uh, just go with S gamut 3 Cine. And once you have that, leave everything exactly how it is. But what you'll notice is you're going to get a very, very flat image, but that's okay. Because what this is going to do is give you a lot more latitude. And now if you apply an input LUT to this, add a creative LUT to this, you're going to get a very cool look. And if you know how to color grade, you can take this footage and really dial in the cinematic creative look that you want to see from your camera. And if you don't exactly know how to do that, I actually do have a course, Shameless Plug, down in the description where I show you how to work through your camera, how to figure out creative ideas, but most importantly, how to take your video and edit it to a high and professional level. So if you're interested, be sure to check that out. So you've got level one, level two, and level three. And if you can master any of these levels, you're going to get dramatically better video. But level three doesn't end there because there's a bonus level called level three S. The S stands for style. Now, one of the most interesting things about making your video stand out is using slow motion 
properly because we don't experience real life in slow motion. So if you put something in slow motion that's interesting, it can take a simple moment and make it feel epic and simply make your audience feel transported or entranced with your video because they've just never seen anything like that. So let's check out the slow motion features on this camera because they're pretty exciting. So for slow motion, you wanna hit the mode button and it will take you into slow motion. Once in slow motion mode, you wanna hit menu. Uh, your same menu will come up. You wanna go right and at the bottom, you'll see S and Q settings here. You have two frame rates, record frame rate and the frame rate. Now you wanna set your record frame rate as low as possible, in this case, 24. And you wanna set your frame rate to either 120 or 60 frames per second. If it's lower than your record frame rate, you'll get a very like jittery quick motion effect, which uh, could look cool. You should experiment with it, but we'll go with 120 for now. And just like that, you have slow motion set up. But two things to note about slow motion is one, everything will be dramatically slower. But in order to get smooth motion, you have to double your shutter speed for whatever your frame rate is. So if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, your shutter speed should be one over 125. And if your, if your frame rate is 120 frames per second, your shutter speed should be approximately 240 or 280 over one. And that way you're going to get a smooth motion and get sharp frames throughout your slow motion. Hope that made sense. But with that, you now know how to do slow motion. Even though this is a video camera, you're probably gonna wanna take photos at some point. And getting the best photo quality out of this camera is actually super easy. All you have to do is hit the mode dial, go over to photo mode, and then hit menu and you'll notice your uh, your menu will change a little bit but you want to go back into that main uh, menu right here that has the uh, camera icon go into file format and pick raw plus jpeg now the reason you want to do raw plus jpeg is this way you have a high quality raw but also a jpeg that you can quickly open up on your computer and just preview it without having to open up Photoshop or some kind of intense program. And then underneath that, set your JPEG quality to extra fine. You never know where you want to use the JPEG. And then your JPEG image size, uh, you'll get a bunch of options, but you always want to set this to 20. And one key thing is right underneath that, you'll also see aspect ratio. Now, when you go into aspect ratio, you'll see three by two, four by three, 16 by nine, and one by one. I personally really like 16 by nine because it makes all of your photos kind of automatically look like a movie where most photos are shot three by two, which is taller than this. And I don't know, it just kind of looks boring to me. But with this, you now have photos set up. And with the information in this video, I have no doubt that you can absolutely get the best footage. And honestly, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. And if you want to learn more about cameras or just how to get better with them, there's also a course in the description down below. Check it out. I've put my life blood and my soul into that. So I hope you guys enjoy the course. And if you want to pick up this camera or any of the accessories for it, I'll also leave links down below for the best pricing on this camera and the best pricing on the accessories. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.